Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talking Logistics, where we have conversations with thought leaders and newsmakers in the supply chain logistics industry. It's my great pleasure to welcome today's program, Andrea Goodpasture, who's Principal Customer Success Partner at Uber Freight. And today we're going to talk about how to enhance your transportation management strategy in 2023. So Benjamin Franklin is often credited with the quote, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And it wouldn't surprise me if he was talking to a transportation professional at the time. And, you know, certainly a lot has changed uh, over the years, but Franklin's advice is as important and relevant today for transportation professionals as, as ever before. So as we begin another year with risk and uncertainty in the market, um, how should shippers approach the transportation management strategy? So that's going to be the overarching question we're going to address in today's episode. And it's great to have Andrea on the program to share her insights and advice on this topic. So Andrea, welcome to the program. No, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and working with you on this. Yeah, great. Well, you know, it, it, you know, it's hard to believe that we're already, you know, well into February, um, but certainly we've got a lot to go in, in 2023. Um, and certainly, you know, today's current reality in the transportation market, it's probably not going to be the same as what's going to be a month from now, six months from now, nine months from now. Um, so certainly we have to kind of, you know, plan ahead. And uh, I think if, uh, you know, it kind of be interesting to see if Benjamin Franklin were alive today, if he would be in the supply chain logistics industry and <laughs> and what advice he would give. I, I would love to have him as a as a guest, but but certainly, um, you know, you're you're pretty experienced and knowledgeable in this area as well, working with clients in 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 the transportation management field. So um, certainly appreciate you you making the time to to be with us today. Um, so as we to get sta- started, I mean, you know, in light of what's transpired over the past you know, two years and in the current state of the transportation market and kind of where it's heading. I mean, how should shippers approach their transportation management strategy this year? I mean, any big adjustments from, from you know, previous years? Yeah, that's a great question. So like, as you pointed out, the last few years have been very volatile. So if you think back to pre-COVID, um, that where the transportation market was, and then through COVID, it started from a rate perspective to really tick up. And we got to a point where um, the spot market was very expensive, um, contract rates followed. So shippers just have had to deal with a lot of um, inflation in their rates and cost increases over the year. Um, even before that, transportation has always been one of the higher p lines from a supply chain perspective. Um, so as it inflates, obviously that brings more and more pressure to the transportation team. So this is, this is a great topic. Um, but recently in the market, we're, we have flipped and we're now in a little bit more of a shipper market than where we've been the last few years. So right now, spot market rates are typically lower than contracted rates, at least for van freight. Um, so some shippers are able to take advantage of that. Um, spot market rates are also lower than where they've been in the past two years. And contract rates are starting to follow that trend downward as well as shippers are going through and renegotiating rates. So it's definitely a good position that shippers are in currently to take advantage of some of those market trends. But what we don't know is how long lasting this trend is going to be. So really what you want to do as a shipper is set yourself up for success in this market and then build strategies that will still be successful in markets. As we know, to your point, everything changes, everything's cyclical. So how do we establish good strategies today that'll take us through um, the changing markets in the future? So it's really critical for shippers to develop a strategy regarding what their transportation is and um, what their plan is. They can rely on transportation managed partners or um, building that that um, muscle and that strength internally. Um, there's just a lot of options. Really, transportation management is the backbone of, of a shipper's operation. Um, just relying on, on partners to help them through that and then putting either with their partners or doing it themselves, putting tools in place from a data visibility side um, for cost components and service to be able to make sure that the plans that they have in place are successful and are achieving the goals that they've set. Yeah, no, I think uh, a lot of great, uh, you, you know, points there. I mean, I think when when um, th- there's there's always the tendency sometimes or the risk that you take this very um, the companies can take a very short term yeah. reactionary approach, right? So it's you know right now, like you said, um, you know rates are favorable on, on the shipper side. Um, so it's, 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 and with pressures in terms of reducing costs or finding cost savings, you know, it's very tempting to say, okay, well, we're going to go, you know, lowest cost. We're going to, you Throw know, everything on the spot market. <laughs> that, that, that's right. You know, and, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, 
I, I don't think smart shippers do this, but yeah, you, you hear sometimes about, yeah, it's time for our revenge, if you will. You know, now, you know, we, we had to pay exorbitant fees, uh, you know, not too long ago. Now, you know, we, we're going to expect, you know, some deep cuts and so forth. But but I think history has proven over and over again that that kind of short term perspective, tit for tat kind of approach um, ultimately ends up hurting you in, in the long term, um, particularly from, you know, when things ultimately are going to turn around again. Um, I think if, you, if you're not smart about it, if you don't take a, a, a kind of a partnership approach to it, you're going to find yourself in a, you know, not only with higher rates, but, yeah. you know, from a customer service perspective, you know, finding capacity is going to be just much more, much more difficult. Um, so, I, so I think it's always, you know, that shippers are always trying to find that right balance between, you know, um, you know, taking cost savings when the market is favorable, but but doing so in such a way that that still protects their carriers and still develops, you know, a, a long-term partnership, you know, with, with, with their carrier partners. Um, and then that leads me to my next question. I mean, you know, cause you know, there's the cost management side of things, but of course there's the security capacity. And, and, and I assume that, you know, establishing a reliable, you know, routing guide, you know, remains important, uh, you know, you know, today, as opposed to just going out to the spot market and get the, the cheapest rates, uh, you know, available. So, so what makes, I guess a basic question, but what makes a routing guide reliable and and what mistakes do shipper of shippers avoid in you know when establishing their their routing guides yes yeah, great question so really it comes down to kind of two key things one is the way that they design their routing guide and then the second is how they manage their capacity against that routing guide so i'm going to start kind of with the design of the routing guide um and first off i'll say not one design of a routing guide fits every shipper it's not like a cookie cutter approach um and i would say the biggest mistake shippers make is not really evaluating even what their strategy is and just saying, this is always how I've done it. And so this is how I'm going to keep doing it in the future. So I would say it's really good, especially right now in the market that we're in to take a step back and say, is my current routing guide strategy successful? Was it successful last year when the market was different? Um, because it may be successful right now just because of the market that we're in, but think back to 2021, 2022, did you see success in the way that your business was running? If not, think through where those pain points were and how do we design that different? Um, so th the factors that you wanna think through when you're looking at your routing guide design is what is your existing network set up? Like where are your ship points located? What are those markets? Where are you delivering freight to? What are those markets look like? Um, and then really think through what your goals are. You have goals for on-time service, you have goals for cost, and are you building your routing guide to support those long-term goals for your company overall? And then also, Think about the future like do you have network changes coming up do you have new ship points coming online production shifting from one location to another um, demand swings so taking all of those into consideration to make sure that you're building out your routing guide to be sustainable for whatever time period that you're sourcing for um, typically a year could be two years could be shorter um, knowing all of those factors and it's really important to align organizationally um, with the leadership of your organization to make sure that everybody's aligned to those goals so are you going to target on-time service because that's the most important thing right now? Or are you really going to try to reduce your cost? Or is it a combination of both that you have to do across your network? Uh, those are those are the things. And also from an operations perspective, what operational constraints are you taking into consideration? You may have a really high volume shipping facility that you can't do um, as many live loads as you have shipments coming out. And so you need drop trailers. And what does that mean for how you have to source capacity? So those are the things that shippers need to keep in the back of their mind as they're establishing their routing guide and going to market with their carriers. And then once your routing guide is active and live, it's really important to put some analytics behind that um, to monitor how it's performing. So are you seeing slippage on certain lanes, certain carriers, certain origins, and how are you going to address that if when you do start to see that slippage? And then um, just keep monitoring what how much of your freight is hitting the routing guide versus how much is hitting the spot market. And is that as intended? Is that not as intended um, for stuff hitting the spot market? Is that okay today? Maybe. In the future, will that be okay? That's some of the things that you want to think through. And should you try to put something in place there, um, just based on if that's a highly um, lane that needs to be serviced well. And so once you kind of have that design and how you want it to work, then you start to think about the capacity, the carrier capacity that you're putting against that. Um, one of the things that just from my past and my experience that I've seen work really well is really building carrier relationships, especially with your core carrier base. And that could mean something different depending on what size of a shipper you are. Um, but truly you should have mutually beneficial relationships with your top carriers. 
um, they're going to rely on you for the volume and consistent volume throughout the years. You're going to rely on them for capacity. Um, this insulates both you and the carrier from these market swings that we're seeing and, and really is something that you can rely on and know that your freight is going to be um, serviced throughout that, that time period. Um, and I know this is kind of a cliche term, but shipper of choice and having the mentality of shipper of choice is still um, top of mind. There's a lot of the shippers we work with, it's still something we talk about and how we can improve their networks and how carriers are viewing their networks and what they need to do on their end. And I'd say right now is actually a really good time to expand your carrier base. So again, think back to 2021, 2022, early 2022, when the market was not so much in the shipper's favor, where did you feel those pain points? And those would be the spots that I would say, are there new carriers from a geographic location or a service location that makes sense to bring into your network that you haven't utilized before? Um, it's a little bit of a low risk time where you can try out some new carriers and see how they fit within your network from a cost and service standpoint. And then the last thing I'd say is um, look at different types of capacity. So you don't always have to ship everything full truckload all the time. Um, with OTR or, or one-way carriers. Um, if you have a lot of short length of haul, maybe you want to investigate, does it make sense for me to put a dedicated operation in here? Um, can I look at going LTL versus truckload, vice versa? Um, and if I do ship a lot of LTL, there's several different types of LTL options out there in the market besides just what I would consider traditional LTL that may give you different service and cost options. So those are all things that as a shipper, um, you definitely want to want to think through. You know, a lot of a lot of food for thought there, and I think going back to to your opening comment that you know th there's no one size fits all you know approach, and I think I think you underscored that with you know some of that the the advice you gave. I mean, it sounds like the first step really is is understanding your network, understanding um, you know your plans for the year as well in terms of expected volumes, um, expected new openings, new customers, promotions, things like that that ultimately could impact your your operation. So really you know, before you dive into the, any kind of procurement engagement, let's say is, is really understanding, you know, your network, understanding your, your existing carrier base, understanding um, your expected plans and forecasts for, for things. And, and that can then help be the starting point to start shaping, you know, the, the right strategy that, that you take. And, and I assume that, you know, something that I heard a lot last year was that, you know, I, I assume that more than ever today, I, correct me if I'm wrong or, or what your thoughts are on this is that, you know, not necessarily everything has, not all of your lanes have to be in a routing guide, you know, particularly if you have, you know, very low volume lanes or um, where perhaps uh, uh, the volume or the frequency is, is, is unpredictable or uh, low, you know, those might be areas that, you know, you might test out the spot market, uh, you know, more frequently and things like that. So I think just the way shippers are approaching contract routing guide versus the spot market is a little bit different today, perhaps, than it was, you know, uh, as a rule of thumb, you know, years ago. Do, do you agree? No, 100% agree. I would say even, not even years ago, January 2022, um, you wanted everything on the routing guide just because spot market rates were typically... 20 to 50% higher than contracted rates. So, but to your point, it's hard to get a contracted carrier when you ship eight loads a year and you're not exactly sure when they're going to come out from your, your facilities. Um, so now we are seeing a trend where shippers are allowing more of that, like we'll call it unplanned or un, um, uncommitted freight uh, to just go to the spot market where we know that the, the costs are going to be relatively low. But at the same time, knowing if the market flips, what is my plan and having another plan for that? Because six months from now, that may not be a good strategy, but right now in the short term, it, it can be, yes. Yeah. And I, and I think that's another point that you, you brought up that I think is a, is a good point is that, you know, this is not a, you know, uh, uh, you run it, you do it and you're done. You know, this is a living, breathing, yes. <laughs> you know, document or living, breathing routing guy that that's going to change over time. Uh, and then you have to keep a pulse on it, you know, in terms of the real actual data that's coming in, the operational data and what, you know, you, you, you know, sitting here in February, you know, you, you may forecast or plan for what your business might look like, you know, a month from now, three months from now, but that's all just a guess and a forecast. And we all know that things don't always, you know, go according to plan. So, right. um, you know, you have to, you're going to have to make those adjustments um, as needed as, you know, the year rolls on and your, and your uh, operations uh, change. Um, and that leads me to my next question. I mean, as the saying goes, I mean, you have to, 
you know, expect the unexpected. So how can shippers take the, you know, quote unquote, the unexpected into account when developing their transportation management strategies and plans? Yeah. I mean, it would be great if there was no surprises in the world, especially transportation, but we know that that's not the case. Um, so really it's just to be as proactive as possible for the things that you can control, or at least that you can react to, or I shouldn't say react to that you can plan for. Um, so one of the key things that we like to help, um, our internal customers with, and I would suggest that all customer or all shippers do this is being able to monitor the industry and knowing what those potential, um, changes could be, and then having plans in place for what you're going to do if these changes happen. And not even just market changes, but other things that can impact the transportation industry. So one of the big things that um, I think we're all aware of that can have major transportation implications, either short-term or long-term, is natural disasters or weather events, um, like what we just saw last week with the, or two weeks ago with the ice storms and kind of the South, um, Mid-South, like shutting down plants, shutting down roads. Um, hurricanes on in Florida or um, Texas, those kind of things. Um, but then there's other industry disruption. So think about all the legislation and regulations changes and what impact that's have. Um, there's negotiations going on between, you know, certain providers and potentially their labor unions and what impact that can have on shipping. Um, there's other actions that other shippers are taking in the marketplace. And if they're big shippers, those can have impacts on the whole industry. And then just carrier changes. If you have a, a core carrier who's going through a merger and acquisition um, with another carrier or a potential carrier with a bankruptcy, um, those are all things that can severely impact your network, depending on how dependent you are on any one of those um, categories that are being impacted. Um, but that being said, all of those things, typically, sometimes the weather can catch us off guard, but typically all of those things you can kind of see coming to some extent, um, and therefore you can put contingency plans in place. And what I mean by contingency plans is you can go ahead and have um, what we would call like levers that you can pull. Like if this happens, I'm going to take this action and have that pre-planned out so that when you wake up Monday morning and hear the news of um, this carrier merged with this carrier, now you already know what your next step is versus trying to have to figure it out on the fly when um, other shippers are doing the same. So I've seen that as a best practice, and that's typically what I would suggest. Um, really, you need to look for sources of data, though, that allow you to keep kind of that pulse on the market and those those um, changes that are happening. Um, and, and those are things that um, there's a lot of uh, information out there um, that you can use, but that's definitely something to, to think about. So again, just be proactive, develop those those mechanisms to track the market and the conditions that you're concerned about, and then have your plans in place. Yeah, certainly this is this is an industry where ignorance is certainly not bliss. I mean, I think this, you know, you definitely have to keep a pulse on the market. And, um, you know, like I said, there's so many uh, sources of data and information and insights about the transportation market these days that, you know, it, 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 it's got to be part of every transportation executive's uh, daily routine, if you will, is to mm -hmm. keep a pulse on what's what's happening in the market. And yeah, I mean, I, I agree 100%. I mean, I think... Um, you know, those companies that are leading the way are those that ask those what if questions and understand what potential impact some of these potential scenarios can have on their uh, operations and then put together, like you said, some game plans um, uh, in place if and when, you know, those things happen. They're, they at least have a starting point or an understanding of what actions to take rather than try to figure things out after the, you know, after the fact and, and be behind the eight ball. Um you know, there's one constant in transportation management, and, and you kind of uh, highlighted it earlier on, and that is the importance of controlling, you know, costs. Um, so, so where are the biggest, you know, cost savings, you know, opportunities today for shippers, and and how can logistics partners help shippers realize those savings? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, of course, the easy answer that we already talked about was spot market lower than contract, but at no level would I suggest throwing all your freight out to the spot market. Uh, really where we see the the biggest bang for the buck is really in data and analytics. So um, I've learned in this industry that there's a lot of shippers who just don't really have a good grasp on what their financials are or what their, their costs truly are in a way that they can break it down and take action on it. Um, so I would say to start with, just go beyond your top line costs. Um, you, may, you may or may not know what your top line transportation spend is. Um, once you know that, because it, and potentially it's because it's coming from a lot of different systems and um, it's not centralized. Um, so one, just get a handle on your top line spend. 
But then once you have that, start to break out your costs into the different cost components. So in transportation, um, there's a few um, ways to look at it, but essentially there's your line haul charges, your fuel charges, and then what we call accessorials, which is everything outside of um, line haul and fuel. And so once you're able to break down your cost into those components, then you can really start to dig into where you're seeing um, some room for opportunity um, and what you can root cause what's driving some of those, um, those expenses. Another key point that I'd, I'd like to point out just because I've seen this myself is auditing is so important. There's a lot of companies who um, maybe they can see line haul fuel and accessorials, but they're not necessarily auditing the invoices against what their contract states. And there's always some challenges there as well. So um, putting a, a solid audit process in place is, is critical as well. So now once you've got visibility to all your charges, you've audited them, you know that they're accurate. Now it's really time to kind of take it to the next level where you start to bump them up against like industry benchmarks and um, market insights to see, okay, on you know this type of freight, this type of lanes, my cost is here and the industry is down here. And what is that gap and why is that caused by? And then start to drill in that way. And you can, if you have the data and analytics, you can do that by geography, by carrier, by um, a lot of different freight types, lead times. There's a lot of different ways to kind of slice that apple. Um, that, that that's good. So that would kind of be the, the areas that I would focus on. Um, but again, a good first step is just gaining visibility to your costs so that you can start to drill in and have those, those discussions and th do those analytics. You know, it, it seems like a, you know, a, a simple, you know, advice, but you know, the, the reality is many companies for a long time really didn't have that visibility and still don't, you know, in terms of having that granular understanding, you know, of their costs, even broken down, you know, by, by those high level buckets, you know, line haul, fuel and, and and accessorials. But you're right. I mean, I think that's the whole value of BI and analytics is that if you have the data, if you have the tools to be able to drill down and, and do the analysis, um, it's going to open your eyes to opportunities out there from a cost perspective, from a service improvements perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly I know in, in previous years, you know, a lot of companies you know, looking at detention or the merge fees, you know, really, you know, not only is that, is there a cost associated with that, but there's also the, the added um, cost of customer experience in terms yeah. of the impact that that has on customer experience. Or if you're in the retail sector, maybe that's an OTIF fine on time and full fine, or, you know, so there's ripple effects, you know, to, you know, to all of that as well. But, but I think the first step is, you know, um, you know, again, another another famous saying. You know, if you if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Um, and I think that is the you know the, the key first step. And, and there's certainly a lot of data today that companies have at or could potentially have at their disposal. Particularly, you know, you brought up you know audit data. I mean, there's a wealth of not of data in in that uh, in that area that can again put the spotlight on um, on opportunities. So so Andrea, as, as a way to wrap up, then I mean, what should transportation executives be telling their CEOs and CFOs today about what to expect in the in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, so what we've seen with a lot of like I work with a lot of CPG companies and what I've seen is a lot of their production is recovering or at least mostly recovered. Um, and really right now a lot of companies are being very cost focused. So how do I make sure that if I can get some of the cost back where I saw inflation over the last couple of years that I do that? And this is a great time to do that. So it's a really good time to be cost focused but also you don't have to sacrifice service, on-time service to do that right now with the current market conditions. So um, really it boils down to having access to the tools, just kind of like what we talked about in the last question, data analytics um, and the knowledge of the market to be able to put those two pieces together to build out your strategy. Overall transportation's goal is to support operations. So what your transportation team is supporting your overall company's operations um, while also maintaining your cost and your service goals. So really it's a perfect time to set the plan to do that in a very stable, um, uh, intentional way. Um, but also you can do that without servicing on-time performance. Um, so the critical components of data and industry knowledge are, are what people really need to be focusing on. Um, build out your strategies to achieve your goals. Um, get database ability to everything you can from cost to service to um, your carrier base. And then again, one of the earlier questions we talked about is market conditions. How do you get access to that data that's really going to help you understand what the current market conditions are, what um, is happening in the market, what you need to be 
aware of so that you can avoid um, any any unforeseen incidents going going further. Um, currently, we're in a shipper friendly market, and this is really the time to stabilize your network and build out your plan so that you can be successful through the the rest of 2023, but even into 2024, 2025. Great. Well, a lot of great insights and, and, and advice there. Um, you know, again, this is a market uh, that we could easily, you know, spend two hours talking about. And, uh, you know, we could probably come back a month from now and probably have a completely different conversation because the market could be completely different right. a, mo <laughs> a, a month from now. But uh, I, but the, the 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 advice you give, I, I gave, you know, I think a a, a great uh, starting points um, that hold true regardless of of market conditions. So, uh, Andrea, again, thank you for for making the time, you know, to be with us today and share your thoughts on how companies can enhance their transportation strategy in in twenty twenty three and beyond. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Great. I want to thank those of you that joined us. If you're watching this episode on demand, either at the Uber Freight uh, website or on Talking Logistics, and you've got a question or a comment for Andrea, you can post it there, and I'm sure she'll be more than happy to respond via that medium. Again, thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you in a future episode of Talking Logistics. Have a yeah, great day. Thank you. Bye.